So let's have a look at some properties of inverses. First of all, we know that the domain of the original is the same as the range of the inverse, and we know that the range of the original is the same as the domain of the inverse. Now we also know that the x and y intercepts of the original function become the y and x intercepts respectively of the inverse. That's a very handy little piece of knowledge to have when you're trying to piece together what the inverse looks like. You just swap the intercepts for a start, which helps you a lot. Okay, we also know that the asymptotes also reflect in the same way. They reflect about the line y equals x. The result is that vertical asymptotes become horizontal. For example, x equals b becomes y equals b, and vice versa. That's also very, very handy to know, guys. Next one. Whenever a function and its inverse intersect, it is almost always an intersection on the line y equals x. This is because the both functions are mirror images of each other about the line y equals x. So if they cross over the line y equals x, then the other one will come to meet it and cross over at exactly the same point. It's just simple geometry. Now, an exception to this, there is an exception which I've discovered. There might be more, but I did discover this one some time ago, so I'd better show you. That is where y is minus x cubed and its inverse. So just have a look at this over the screen. Now, this first case of two that I'm going to show you is what we would expect to happen. We've got the graph here, this brownie colored graph of y equals x cubed. And we've got its inverse, the red graph here, y equals x to the third. And you can see that they intersect in three places, here, here, and here, all along the line y equals x. So that's situation normal. That's what everybody thinks is going to happen. But now have a look at this picture here. This is really crazy. This is the graph here, the green graph of y equals minus x cubed and the yellowy orangey one here is its inverse which is y is minus x all in brackets to the third and you'll see that these two graphs intersect at three places as well but they are along the line y equals minus x okay this pinky line here is y equals minus x so this is very much an exception to the rule but the vast majority of times, if they do intersect, they will intersect along the line y equals x, okay? Okay, some more properties. Now, this is a real beauty, this one. This is the f of f of minus 1 of x equals x. So this is written in composite function style, and we know that a function of its inverse equals x, and we know that the inverse function of the original function equals x. Did you know that? It's pretty crazy, but it's true, and you can use it to great advantage, and you really do need to know it, because it does pop up and give you great insights into certain questions when it does pop up. All right, next one. If f of x equals x to the n, then the inverse function equals x to the 1 over n. That's also pretty nice. For example, if f of x equals x to the 3, then the inverse would be x to the 3rd. If you had the original function was uh, x to the 4, so the right-hand side of it, so that you didn't have a many-to-one situation, x to the 4, then the inverse would be x to the quarter. That's a really nice one to sock away in your little arsenal of mathematical tricks, too. Yes, okay, now, another one. Functions which are symmetrical about the line y equals x have an identical inverse function. Now, what does that mean? Well... This one here, y equals x, that actually coincides with the line y equals x, of course, and so that's probably not a, a really good case to think about in terms of the inverse being the same as the original, because they're right on that line anyway. But this one is a good one, y equals minus x. Now, if you think about that, if you drew that, you would see that it is symmetrical on either side of the line y equals x, and therefore you get exactly the same function when you form the inverse. Uh, this is another one, this is a rec rectangular hyperbola. That one is also symmetrical about the line y equals x. Um, also any translation of that rectangular hyperbola where the translation is the same 
in the x and y directions, you'll also produce a rectangular hyperbola which is still symmetrical about the line y equals x and therefore the inverse is the same as the original. Okay, that's a case in point. Y is 1 over x minus 1 plus 1. If that was, uh, that's been translated one unit to the right and one unit up compared to y equals 1 over x and it has the same inverse as itself. There's y equals 1 over x. See how it's symmetrical? Either side of the line y equals x, yeah? So the inverse is the same as the original. And that's another case there uh, which I was just alluding to just above. Okay, that's been translated one unit to the right and one unit up. And it is still symmetrical about the line y equals x, and therefore the inverse is the same as the original function. So now I'm going to prove to you that f to the minus 1 of f of x equals x as an explanation for you, just to put your mind at rest as to why this is the case, okay? We have a diagram. This is point 1 and this is point 2. Point 1 is x and f of x, and point 2 is the mirror image on the other side of the line y equals x. In other words, the corresponding point of the on the inverse function corresponding to this point on the original function and I've labelled that x2 and f to the minus 1 of x2. Alright, now let's just go with this argument. You'll be amazed. So, we're letting x and f of x and x2 and f to the minus 1 of x2 be reflections of each other about the line y equals x as I just explained x and f of x is the coordinate point on the original function and x2 and f to the minus 1 of x2 is on the inverse function, right? The reflection of the original point. So you know and I know that point 2 is actually an xy swap of point 1. So I can also put a supplementary label on this point here as follows, like that. See that? So that's really f of x and x. So x2 is the same as f of x, and f to the minus 1 of x2 is the same as x. And that really proves it, as I'll now explain. Hence, have a look at this, guys. If uh, x2 equals f of x, then f to the minus 1 of x2 is f to the minus 1 of f of x. But as we know, that point is actually also just x, okay? You can see that, so therefore we know that f to the minus 1 of x2 is actually x. So if f to the minus 1 of x2 is x, but f to the minus 1 of x2 is this, therefore we can say that this is the case. f to the minus 1 of f of x, which is the same as x2, equals x. Yeah, that's it. Now the converse is also true, and that is that f of f to the minus 1 of x also equals x, and I've explained all this on the lower half of the screen, which I'm going to reveal in a moment, to allow you then to pause the video and have a good look at it and see whether you're satisfied. Okay, here it comes, ready, set, go. Alright, pause me and come back when you're ready.